This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University. And today I want to answer the question, is Cardano, also known as ADA, secure? If you're interested in learning how to make money in both bull and bear markets, or you just want to see what I'm trading or investing in, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So I've been getting a lot of questions about Cardano and I've been uh, researching it. In this video, I'm going to ask for the help from people who lot, know a lot more about Cardano than I do. I think I've come up with a critique against the security of Cardano, but I want to know your thoughts, especially if you're deep down the rabbit hole and know more about this than I do, because I don't pretend to be an expert in Cardano. My background is basically, a lot of people consider me to be a Bitcoin maximalist, just so you know where I'm coming from, and Bitcoin's the only crypto that I own at the moment, but I'm quite interested in learning more about Cardano. So the big news with Cardano in the last month or so was they introduced a new proof of stake port protocol. They did a hard fork to get everyone on it. This is called the Shelly hard fork, and it looks like this was end of July 2020. Quick review for those of you who don't know the difference between proof of work and proof of stake. Basically, when you have a network, you need to decide on a consensus mechanism for the network to decide who owns which coins, what is the status of the network, what's the status of the block, the block, uh, the blockchain. And so there are two ways of doing it. The traditional way with Bitcoin is proof of work, where you basically buy this really expen these really expensive specialized computers, you burn lots of electricity, and if you win the uh, lottery doing these uh, hash calculations, you get to mine the next block, and then you get rewarded with 6.25 brand new Bitcoin. The critique of proof of work is that it uses a lot of electricity and very um, environmentally intensive, you might say, which I disagree with. I think that advanced civilizations use a lot of power, use a lot of electricity. I think the internet now uses something like 10% of global electricity, and no one suggests shutting the internet off because it's it's too wasteful. But that's a topic that I do cover in another video, which I'll link to below. So that's proof of work, where you basically use lots of energy, lots of electricity. Uh, you use an extrinsic resource, a resource that's outside of the crypto network to uh, enforce security on the network. That's proof of work, where you actually do work. It's very similar to gold mining, where you actually have to do work to mine the gold out of the ground. Proof of stake, uh, I like to compare it a little bit to poker. It's not an exact analogy, but you basically ante up coins, and the more coins you ante up or stake, the higher the probability that you'll be chosen to, to mine the next block. They use the word forge or create. If you do something bad, if you break the rules, you lose your stake. And so there's a monetary incentive here. I go a little bit more into this in my video on proof of work versus proof of stake, which I'll, I'll link to below as well. This is uh, the new proof of stake uh, protocol. It's called Uro, Uroboros. And um, I'm going to quickly switch out of dark mode here because it makes it a little bit difficult to see. Basically, this is what they, they fork to. And if you go to this, this is on the Cardano, uh, the Cardano website. And I should point out that people say Cardano is decentralized. There are different meanings of this term, but it is being developed by a company by a software company in my in my book that makes it fairly centralized it has charles hoskinson as the founder and leader very different from satoshi nakamoto who's disappeared no one knows who he is but that's another question for uh, about centralization here we're going to stick to security so on the cardano website they say that uroboros as a protocol is guaranteed to be secure so long as 51 percent of the stake in other words 50, more than 50% uh, of the ADA coins are, whole, are held by honest participants. Side note, Ouroboros is, refers to this, uh, this ancient symbol with a dragon eating its own tail, in case you wonder where they got the name from. Uh, here's another, another uh, description where you uh, basically you put up a stake if you want to make the next, uh, the next block. And then the Cardano's proof of stake system, the Ouroboros system, uses a randomized process to to elect a stakeholder, produce a block, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's that's basically how it works. Now, what are the uh, what do people say about this? Well, the way this is always sold is that it's more environmentally friendly. It doesn't use very much electricity at all at all because you're not you don't need this specialized software. I think you can run proof of stake just on a normal laptop using uh, minimal amounts of electricity. And the, the idea is that proof of stake cryptos like Cardano, ADA, are safe because 
the way the only way you can do a 51% attack is you'd have to buy up all you'd have to buy up more than 50% in other words of the ADA tokens which would massively drive up the price if you tried to corner the market in Cardano but i want to talk about what what if there's another way to exploit um, to find a security hole. And this is important that the scenario I'm going to talk about seems fairly low probability, but when you're designing advanced engineering systems, you do need to think about these sort of black swans. Uh, if you're designing an airplane, obviously you want to stay in the air, but you really have to think about what could go wrong. And even if there's just a 1% chance of it happening or a 0.01% chance when there are human lives at stake in the case of an airplane or when there's wealth being stored in the case of a crypto, what really matters are these tail scenarios and how a proof of work system would handle it versus a proof of stake uh, consensus algorithm. So let's let's begin with the observation that the distribution of wealth always fall, follows power laws. And what this means is the richest people tend to own most of the assets. One reason for this is the richer you are, the more power you have, the more control you have, and it becomes much easier to become even more rich. We've certainly seen that in 2020, where the top 1% has added hundreds of billions of dollars to their net worth while there are still tens of millions of tens of millions of Americans unemployed. The latest statistic I saw is the richest 1% of Americans own more than 50% of the market cap of stock. So let's say this eventually happens with Cardano. Let's assume that it's going to be successful. I don't I personally don't think it's gonna be successful. That's my bias, which I should say up front. But let's say it does become successful and it begins to follow a wealth power law where just a few people begin to own large amounts of it. So let's just say we could pick a random number. Let's say 15 people, you could say five people or 10 people own 51% of the cryptocurrency at some point in the future. So then what could happen? Well, let's say some bad actor, which could be an individual, a wealthy individual, a terrorist organization, a, a state, a government, Let's say they decide to kidnap and torture all these people uh, until they reveal their private keys. So the thing about uh, proof of stake cryptos is people always assume the only way to get your hands on them would be to spend a lot of money buying them on the open market, buying them on exchanges, which would drive up the price. And the more you bought, the higher the price would go. And so it'd be almost impossible to corner the market. But what's not impossible is to actually track down people and kidnap them and torture them until they give you their private keys. And once they give you your private keys, you as that bad actor then control uh, 50, let's say you control 51% of Cardano, uh, of the ADA tokens. So once, as far as I can tell, once you control more than 51%, and we just mentioned it here that the protocol is secure as long as 51% of the TAC, 51% uh, of the stake is held by honest participants, but let's say 51% of the stake is now held by a dis dishonest uh, participant, what can you do? Well, you can double spend coins. You can also, as far as I can tell, and this is where I'll need your help if I've gotten this wrong, you can rewrite the history of the blockchain. Uh, unlike with proof of work where it's very expensive, you need to do um, spend all this electricity and do all these calculations, and it becomes it becomes virtually impossible with Bitcoin because in order to modify a block, you have to modify all the blocks that come after that. So if I want to go uh, 10 blocks back, I then have to do uh, T minus 10, T minus 9, T minus 8, etc. And I, I don't have the math in front of me, but I've seen it, and it's 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 almost impossible to do. It's incredibly expensive. Bitcoin's expensive enough the way it is. So if you control 51% of Cardano and you're a dishonest actor, you can rewrite the history of the blockchain. You can create lots of competing chains that contain different histories. And as far as I can tell, there'll be no way to sort out which is the correct chain or the correct history. Unless... Uh, Cardano. Cardano may have checkpoints. I was unable to find this. A checkpoint is a point at which the history is secure up until that point. Uh, but m my take on this, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, is that if a currency, if a crypto has checkpoints, it just switches the problem from one point in time to another. And at that checkpoint time, who gets to decide which blockchain is the real one? So if you don't have a checkpoint, you have to decide today, right now, which is the real blockchain. Uh, and if you have a checkpoint, you have to decide back five days ago, whenever that checkpoint was, which was a real blockchain. So I think 
in my in my um, in my uh, amateur opinion here, uh, or layman's opinion, I should say, uh, th having a checkpoint doesn't solve this problem as far as I can tell. But I may be wrong, and please chime in in the comments if you know why I'm wrong. You can create complete blockchains, as we said. There's no way to decide which is the real one. Let's compare this to Bitcoin. If uh, if you own, let's say you buy up 51% of the Bitcoin, which is out there, which is quite expensive. That'd be approximately 110, $115 billion right now. But we could assume uh, a nation state could do this. If you own 51% of the coins in Bitcoin, it's not a proof of state currency. So you can't do a double spending attack. It doesn't give you control of the network. You could dump the Bitcoin. You could sell it very quickly and try to drive the price down close to zero, which would certainly scare a lot of people. I think the very hardcore hodlers would not be scared out. Uh, people like me, I'm prepared to write it all the way down to zero. I've basically written it off as an investment. But this could create a lot of havoc, obviously. We did get a crash in Bitcoin in March. Uh, where it went down quite a bit and it made its way back up. So I don't think this would not destroy the network if someone owned 51% of the coins. Now, to actually do a 51% attack on Bitcoin because it's a proof of work uh, crypto, you need to own, uh, or you need to control, I should say, 51% or more of the hash power, which is currently, I think this is the, it's got to be the biggest, most powerful, powerful supercomputer in the world. Um, the whole Bitcoin network considered as a whole running at approximately 123 exahashes per second. It's just a mind-boggling amount of power. And so in order to uh, control 51% or more of the hash power, you'd have to buy all these very specialized ASICs, these specialized uh, hardware machines, and you'd have to spend just a ton of electricity. And even once you control the hash power, once you own all these computers, it become it's still quite difficult to pull off a 51% attack or a sustained one since you need to consistently, you need to keep spending money. In other words, fiat money. Now, if you're a government, you can do this because you can keep printing money, but you basically need to keep burning electricity to keep the attack going. And so there are limits to how long a 51% attack uh, can do, can go in Bitcoin. And even if you did, even if a 51% attack happened with Bitcoin, and it has happened with lesser cryptos like uh, I believe Ethereum Classic. But even with Bitcoin, even if you could pull off one of these attacks, you would not be able to change the code to increase the maximum supply of Bitcoin from 21 million to anything else. You would not be able to steal Bitcoin from someone else. You, to do that, you need their private key. What you could do is you could print some empty blocks. You could just refuse to uh, accept any transactions into the network. And so it would be a big problem. It would be very disruptive. Uh, but it would be too expensive to change the blockchain history uh, for any significant period. Maybe you could go back one or two blocks, maybe three or four blocks, uh, but you would not be able to go back many, many, many blocks as you would with proof of stake because to change the blockchain and proof of stake, like Cardano, you don't need to burn a lot of electricity to do a lot of work. You just need to be a big stakeholder. And once you uh, have somehow gotten your hands on those 51% of the coins, you are that person. Now in Bitcoin, what happens? We could, uh, if there is a 51% attack and it doesn't look like it's going away, we could always change the underlying hash algorithm. And uh, the problem with this is it would immediately make all those Bitmain ASICs, ASICs uh, useless, and so it'd destroy tons of uh, tons of capital. And this would hurt the bad miners, the bad actors who were doing the 51% attack. It would also hurt the good miners. This is sort of the nuclear option, as they say. And uh, the reason it's a nuclear option is you'd have to buy all this new hardware to get everything back up and running. Uh, if all these ASICs dropped off, we'd probably be able to start mining Bitcoin again on our laptops using CPUs or GPUs. Uh, but what happens with if you try to do this sort of switch with Cardano or any proof of stake algorithm is that it doesn't really matter. You can change the you can change the algorithm, but the switching costs are very low, and so it's not. Uh, it's not as protective and it would mean that you might have to do it a number of times. I'm not sure exactly how this would work. This is a little bit another place where I could use some input from outside people. So if we take a look at the market caps, I like to look at market caps of cryptos because it tells you how much money, how much wealth is being stored in that crypto. Currently, Bitcoin, 217 billion. Cardano, uh, 
at uh, th at three billion. So this shows you it's very hard to find a proof of stake uh, crypto that is storing any significant amounts of money. Obviously, three billion is is uh, a lot of money for any individual. It's not a lot of money for an asset, especially you can see even Ethereum's up at at forty nine. Billion. So this is not to say that Cardano can't eventually rise in the ranks of market cap, but I think I think there are fundamental problems with proof of stake. I'm going to um, keep thinking about this, and I appreciate any input that you guys have. If you want to learn more about Bitcoin, 51% attacks, the concentration of mining pools in China, uh, this sort of thing, uh, you can check out this video, which I'll link to as well. If you found this video helpful, please hit the subs subscribe and like button, hit that notification bell so you can be notified when my next video comes out. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. If you know a lot about Ouroboros or Cardano, I'd appreciate hearing from you especially. Thanks a lot for listening, and I'll see you in the next video.